the mega city of Mumbai. More than 20 million people live and work in this coastal city. Space is at a premium. More than half the residents live in slums and shanty towns. But this too is Mumbai, an incredible natural spectacle. Every year, 30,000 flamingos come to Thane Creek, the northern part of the estuary that forms Mumbai Harbor. The birds migrate from the neighboring state of Gujarat, some from as far away as the Middle East. Thane Creek was declared a wildlife sanctuary last year. There are dense mangrove forests here, so it's accessible only by boat. Marine biologist N. Vasudevan heads the Forest Service's mangrove cell. His job is to protect Mumbai's mangrove forests. During the uh, uh, spring times, uh, the entire place is uh, covered with uh, saline water. And in a situation like this, other trees cannot grow. Mangroves have special adaptations to grow in such areas. If mangroves are not there, all, the whole place would have been barren. The creek's mangrove forests provide a habitat for many plants and animals. There's plenty of food for them. The flamingos feed on algae that grow on the mudflats and are exposed at low tide. They also eat mollusks and crustaceans. Mangroves are also a spawning ground for several species of fish and crabs. But this seemingly healthy ecosystem in the middle of Mumbai is no paradise. In many places, the lack of toilets and sanitation means wastewater ends up unfiltered in the sea, just like plastic and other refuse. That's taking its toll on the mangroves, suffocating their roots. The fragile ecological balance has been upset. We are trying to know bring a coordination between different stakeholders, uh, including the urban bodies, to address this problem uh, seriously. And I'm sure it will work in the next few years. A major uh, you know, sewage treatment facility has to be created, not one, maybe many, uh, at strategic locations. Pollution isn't the only threat. Illegal shanty towns are a major problem all over Mumbai. In some places, the mangrove forests are destroyed to make room for new slums. Makrand Godka and his team are in charge of monitoring Mumbai's mangroves. They use maps and satellite images to identify the location and size of mangrove ecosystems in the city. Sometimes, they resort to extreme measures. Early this year, after a tough court battle, they demolished an illegal settlement in a mangrove area. In the past four years, Godka has had about 3,000 huts pulled down, earning himself the nickname Demolition Man. Sometimes I'm asked, how can I demolish people's huts? But Mumbai's population is skyrocketing. Mangroves that protect the city are being destroyed. How can we not take action? Within the sanctuary, the Forest Service is getting a helping hand from Germany. The GIZ Development Agency is building an information center and a park here. It's also supporting an initiative to persuade local businesses to make a voluntary commitment to preserving biodiversity. The initiative's organizers say some companies are cooperating, but in general, it's hard to convince them. The Forest Service sees healthy mangroves as the key to Mumbai's survival. So it's trying to reintroduce local mangrove species that have been threatened with extinction.
They've already raised 15 varieties in this nursery. Seema Adgoankar regularly conducts awareness campaigns. The mangoes are Mumbai's life insurance. They provide us with a lot of oxygen, and we're all responsible for protecting the trees. Many Mumbai residents aren't even aware of what a treasure they have here. Today, school pupils have come to see and learn about the creek's exotic wildlife. I was really surprised to see flamingos here. I had no idea we had any in India. I think they're amazing. And evidently, the flamingos aren't the only attraction for the young visitors.